I'm Joshua Bardwell, and if you're a beginner to this hobby who is still figuring out how to use your freaking multimeter, you're going to learn something today. Uh, I know many of you already know how to use a multimeter. This, is, this video isn't really for you unless you just like listening to me talk. I know you guys are out there. <laughs> In my previous video in this series, I told you about the continuity function of the multimeter. That's this function right here. It looks like a little sound waves coming out of a buzzer or a beeper. And uh, it tells you when you have electrical continuity between the probes. In this video, I am going to give you a practical application of the continuity feature. Uh, I've just finished making this charging adapter for this freaking huge 5 amp hour uh, 5S battery. And before I plug it in, I'm going to do some basic safety checks because what I don't want to happen is I don't want to plug this in. I don't want it to have a short and short this battery. This thing will make, if you think a 1300 battery is scary, geez, if this thing goes off, some, I'm going to have a really bad day. So I do not want there to be a short in this adapter. And I also want to make sure that it's all wired up correctly. So we're going to do a very, very basic check. I'm going to show you the same thing for my smoke stopper bulb in a minute, and it'll be a little different because we've got a, a resistive element here, but let's start with this one. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna visually inspect and make sure that I've pinned it out correctly. If you look right here on the XT60, there is a little minus symbol. If you forget, you can always double check. And even if you think you remember, it's a good idea to double check because sometimes we all have a brain fart and we get it wrong. So there's a little minus symbol there. And there's a little plus symbol there. And I'm going to confirm that the red wire is going to the plus symbol and the black wire is going to the minus symbol. This is a very, very simple and basic thing that I still do every time because the consequences of getting it wrong can be really bad. You may have this style of XT60. This is a, just a slightly different style. And on these, the plus and the minus are printed right here instead of being printed right there. Regardless, they should have it printed somewhere on it. If you really can't find that anywhere, just get out a battery and double check. The, uh, the, although sometimes every now and then batteries come from the factory wired backwards. So it's not impossible that you could get a problem. Um, as, a, as a side note, not related to this video, when you get new batteries from the factory, it's a good idea to plug them into your battery charger uh, and, and try and do it as like a storage cycle on them or just plug it into the battery charger. Because if the battery comes from the factory wired up wrong, the charger will give you an error message when you plug it in. And not don't just plug in the balance connector, but plug in the discharge lead as well. It, it does happen that batteries come from the factory with the discharge lead wired backwards. And uh, if you plug that into your copter, the smoke will come out of all your ESCs and many other things as well. And that's just the end of it. Okay, so visual inspection passes on this side. And next we're gonna do a visual inspection on this side. Now this is a bullet connector. Uh, it is just two, I think they're three millimeter, maybe 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors. And they're inside this little shroud. And you can see that the shroud is keyed with a big side and a little side. And that's to prevent you from ever plugging it in backwards. Now I built this and if I've put the shroud on backwards or done something wrong, I could again get myself into trouble. So I'm gonna again do a visual inspection. This is the battery right here. And I'm gonna do a visual inspection that, let's see. The black wire goes to the big one, which has the female connector in it. Here's the small one with the black wire, which goes to the male connector. That is correct. Everything adds up. If anything doesn't add up there, we're going to scrap this. We're going to start over. We're not going to plug it in. And likewise, the red one goes to the big connector, which has a female in it. And that goes to the red wire which goes to the little shroud, which has the male connector in it. Okay, so our physical inspection checks out. Um, I've seen people do builds and they do their wires all black, for example, for, for aesthetics, I suppose. I hate that idea because it prevents you from doing things like this. The red and the black wires are there for a reason. And I know if you're super careful and you never make mistakes, that will not be a problem for you, but we're all human uh, and we make mistakes. And I feel like using red and black wires uh, especially for big batteries like this, is an important safety feature. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check for continuity uh, on the ends. And there should be continuity, obviously, between this pin and this one, right? We want continuity from here over to there. And obviously, if I've built this correctly, there will be. And there is. Okay, good. That just means I didn't screw up my solder joint somehow, or who knows. It's a very, again, basic thing. Now I'm going to check the positive side. I'm going to stick it in there and touch it here, 
Okay, good. That means that electricity will flow from end to end as I want it to. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check that there is no continuity between the positive and the negative, right? Oh, the, the negative and the positive. So I'm going to stick one in here and one in there, and I do not want to hear a beep. If I do hear a beep, it means that when I plug this in, bad, bad things will happen. No beep. And if you really want to be super anal retentive, you can check the other side too, although the checks that we did should ensure that that didn't happen, but yeah, well, let's just check the other side. I'm going to stick, it, stick the probe in inside one and then touch the other. No beep. Okay, excellent. That is a very good sign that things are all right. If you really want to be totally anal retentive and we're completely over the top safety minded, you can get a clamp meter like this. Uh, and this is a Unity UT210E. I have a review of it on my channel. You can search my channel and find the review of it. Or maybe I'll even put a link in the upper right if I remember. <laughs> uh, and this will measure current flow. And um, it can, if I put this on 20 amps, and I'm going to change it to DC current flow, and I'm going to zero it out, I'm going to put it on the positive lead of the battery, okay? And let's just make sure it's zeroed. Now, if I plug this in, and I start to see current flow, that will mean I have a short somewhere, and the battery is going to explode. So... This is a, a final check if you're like, I'm, I'm, I don't usually work with batteries this big. I'm a little scared of this battery to tell you the truth, but I think we all should have a healthy respect of LiPo. So now I'm going to plug this in and no current flow as there shouldn't be because of the checks I did with continuity, but Hey, you know, belt and suspenders, right? So now we can feel reasonably confident that this is safe to use. Now I told you I was also going to check the smoke stopper. And the smoke stopper, if I check the negative wire, you see in the negative wire, it's just straight through. So if I check the negative wire for continuity, I should see that I have continuity. And sure enough, I do, as you would expect. But if I check the positive wire for continuity, what's going to happen? Let's find out. I do, have, I do have continuity there. And notice that the meter is reading 0.6. And by the way, let me turn this just, I'm going to turn this just to resistance mode. I'm going to measure the resistance here, uh, but you won't have to listen to the beeping. Let's measure the negative wire again. The resistance here is zero, 0 0.1. It's basically, it's almost nothing should be the resistance of this wire. I actually don't trust that a little bit. 0 0.1, 0 0.2 is probably, the ohm meter is probably having trouble reading such a low resistance as just this piece of wire. But if I measure on the positive lead, the resistance is 0.5, a half an ohm. If it's reading about a half an ohm. And that half an ohm is coming from the element in this bulb. And that's why the smoke stopper works. The smoke stopper has this bulb which presents some resistance. And when current flows through here, that resistance causes, uh, causes heat. To build up and light to be emitted that energy and energy is lost there and that's what limits the current and that's why the smoke stopper works now i was curious whether we would get the beep the continuity beep here well the way the continuity function works is that the ohm meter or the, the multimeter sends a very 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 small current from one probe to the other probably from the red to the black from the positive to the negative and if that current flows then continuity exists and if the current doesn't flow then continuity doesn't exist and if the resistance of the circuit is low enough then just enough current will flow that it'll say ah you got continuity so continuity is not really an, a binary all or nothing thing you could have just a little bit of current flow and the ohmmeter goes yeah you got continuity there um, or if you have sufficiently small amount of current to flow then you won't have continuity so if this resistance was high enough then eventually we would not get the continuity beep but in this case the resistance is low enough that we do get the continuity beep and that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Uh, if you're going to make any kind of adapters like this, I think you should do the checks that I just showed you. Physical inspection, then check the continuity from end to end on the wires to make sure that everything, you know, the, the electricity will flow where you want it to. And then check continuity side to side, positive to negative, to make sure that the electricity will not flow where you don't want it to. And then if you really want to be completely anal retentive, you can even use a clamp meter to check for current flow at the moment that you first plug in. Thanks for watching.
Happy flying.